Hello and welcome to HIVRNA Test Guide Podcast, your trusted source for HIV testing, with over 4,500 plus testing labs across the United States. What is a preventive HIV vaccine and how does it work? And that's exactly what we're going to unpack today. Yeah, absolutely. And our mission for this deep dive is really to give you a clear understanding of um, what a preventive HIV vaccine actually is yeah. and you know where things stand right now, why it's considered so important in public health, and uh, what the ongoing research looks like. We'll pull out the key insight from the listener's material, so hopefully you walk away with a, a good sense of this vital topic. Okay, great. So let's dive right in then. What exactly is a preventive HIV vaccine, and um, how does it really teach our bodies, especially against something as complex as HIV? Right. So at its core... A preventative HIV vaccine is something given to people who don't have HIV. The goal is pretty straightforward, basically train their immune system to prevent infection if they ever get exposed to the virus. You can think of it like uh, other vaccines we know well, polio, tetanus, measles, things like that. All vaccines work on that same basic idea. Show the immune system something harmless that looks like the pathogen. So it learns to recognize it and you know build defenses. For HIV, the vaccine gives the immune system a kind of heads up, like a preview, preparing it to protect you if you encounter the real thing. Okay, that makes sense. But I think the question that immediately jumps out for many people is uh, safety. Can you actually get HIV from one of these vaccines? That feels like a really important point to address up front. That's a super important question. And the answer is a clear, definite no. You cannot get HIV from a preventive HIV vaccine. It's a common worry. But um, it's based on a misunderstanding of how these vaccines work. See, unlike maybe some flu shots that use weakened or inactivated virus, these preventive HIV vaccines, well, they simply don't contain HIV, not the whole virus anyway. The experimental ones being tested use different methods. Some use like viral genes or just pieces of protein from the virus. Others aim to generate these things called broadly neutralizing antibodies or BNABs. Okay. These are special antibodies that can hit many different HIV strains. But the key thing is none of these methods use actual infectious HIV. Right. So transmission isn't possible. And uh, what's really powerful, the source material points this out specifically, yeah. around 30,000 people have been in HIV vaccine studies worldwide over the last, say, 25 years. And not a single person has gotten HIV from any vaccine tested. Zero. Wow. 30,000 people, zero infections from the vaccine. That's that's yeah. incredibly reassuring. It really is. It speaks volumes about the safety protocols and the vaccine designs themselves. Definitely. So, okay, we know what they are and they're safe. But uh, what about availability? Can we actually get an FDA-approved preventative HIV vaccine right now? Ah, uh, well, no. Not currently. There are no FDA-approved preventive HIV vaccines available for general use. Any experimental vaccines are only accessible if you participate in a clinical trial. You can't just, you know, buy one or get one from your doctor outside of that research context. Okay, so still in the trial phase. Exactly. But, and this is important, that doesn't mean there hasn't been really significant progress. Research has definitely shown promise. Mm -hmm. For instance, there was a big trial, RV144, finished over a decade ago now. It showed the vaccine could reduce HIV infection risk by about 31%. 31%? Yeah, which, okay, wasn't complete protection, obviously. But it was a huge first step. It really encouraged more research. And more recently, the AMP studies that stands for Antibody Mediated Prevention, they look at those broadly neutralizing antibodies, the BNABs. They found that infusions of these BNABs could cut HIV infection risk by up to 75%. 75%. That sounds very promising. It is, but there's a key detail from the source here. Mm. That impressive reduction was only for some strains of the virus. Ah, okay. So not universally effective yet. Right. It worked well against strains sensitive to that specific antibody. So it's not the final answer, but it's another huge piece of the puzzle. It tells us that antibodies can prevent infection, and ongoing work is trying to build on that, aiming for broader, more effective prevention. I see. So it's like we're seeing these tangible steps forward, real breakthroughs in understanding, even if the final product isn't ready for prime time yet. It's a process. Exactly. It's an iterative process, building on each success and learning from each challenge. Now, you mentioned different types of vaccines earlier. We hear about therapeutic vaccines, too. Can you just clarify the difference between this preventative kind we're discussing and a therapeutic one? Yes, absolutely. And that's a really crucial distinction. It helps frame what we're talking about. So a preventive HIV vaccine, our focus today is all about preventing infection in the first place. Mm. It's given to people who are HIV negative, aiming to stop them from ever getting the virus. Okay. Before exposure. Exactly. Mm. 
Now, a therapeutic HIV vaccine is totally different. It's developed for people who already have HIV. The goal there is to boost their own immune system's response to the virus they already carry, maybe help control the virus better, potentially even reduce the need for daily medication someday. That's the hope. Oh, okay. The source material actually mentions there's a separate fact sheet just for therapeutic vaccines, which kind of highlights their distinct research areas. Right. Different goals, different populations. Precisely. Yeah. Today, we're squarely focused on the preventive side, stopping infection before it ever starts. That clarifies things perfectly. So thinking about that goal, stopping infection, we have made incredible strides with treatments like art and also prevention tools like pre pre They've changed the landscape. So why is a vaccine, a preventive vaccine, still seen as so critical? Why is it often called the sort of ultimate goal? That's a great question because the current tools are amazing. Art allows people with HIV to live long, healthy lives, and pre bue is highly effective at preventing infection. But they both come with challenges, especially over a lifetime. Our source material points to a few key issues. Things like access. These medicines aren't easily available everywhere in the world. There could be side effects, too, and the cost, well, the cost could be really high, a major barrier for many. And adherence, right? Taking a pill every single day. Exactly. Long-term art and pre p 2 requires really strict adherence. Missing doses can be a problem. For art, missing doses can unfortunately lead to drug resistance. The virus can mutate, making the current drugs less effective. That means someone might need to switch to different medications, which can be more complex, maybe have more side effects. Mm. Yeah, I can see how that becomes a lifelong management challenge. It really does. And that's why researchers believe a preventive vaccine could be the most effective tool in the long run. It could potentially overcome many of these limitations. Imagine an intervention that's maybe one shot or a few shots and provides long-lasting protection. That would be a complete game changer. Absolutely. It would simplify prevention massively, especially on a global scale. It's seen as key to truly controlling or maybe even one day eliminating new HIV infections. Okay, the importance is crystal clear. So looking forward then, what's actually happening now in the research? What are scientists exploring in these clinical trials? Well, there's quite a lot happening on multiple fronts. Nope. The source mentioned several key areas. They're looking at different ways to actually deliver the vaccines, like traditional needle and syringe versus maybe middle-free devices. That could be huge for rollout in some places. Yeah, definitely. They're also studying the immune responses in people who get the vaccines in minute detail trying to figure out exactly what kind of response provides the best protection and how to generate it reliably. Understanding the how. Precisely. And of course, safety is always paramount. Continued safety monitoring is a core part of every single trial. The main goal, naturally, is to see if the vaccine actually works. Mm. Does it effectively protect people from getting HIV if they're exposed? The big efficacy question. That's the one. And interestingly, some studies are also looking at whether a vaccine might help control the virus, even if someone in the trial does become infected. Like, does it lead to lower viral loads? Oh, so even a partial benefit could be valuable information. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It might point towards strategies that, while not fully preventing infection, could still have a clinical benefit. Every piece of data helps build the picture. And uh, for anyone listening who really wants to get into the weeds on this, the source suggests checking out clinicaltrials.gov. It's an online database. And you can search for studies on preventive HIV vaccines. Clicking on a trial title gives you more info, what they're testing, who can participate, the status, sometimes even results. That's a great resource for people who want to follow the science closely. You know, reflecting on all this, what really stands out to me from our deep dive today is just the incredible persistence, the sheer amount of, like, scientific brain power and, frankly, hope being poured into solving this. It's a complex, tough, global health challenge. Seeing the journey from basic science through trials like RV144 and AMP, it's really a story of uh, relentless effort. It absolutely is. And if we connect this to the bigger picture, thinking beyond just the science, a truly effective preventive HIV vaccine wouldn't just change individual lives. It could fundamentally reshape global health. Mm -hmm. Imagine easing the burden of lifelong treatment, the economic costs, the social aspects, especially in resource-limited settings. Mm -hmm. It really highlights how far we've come in understanding immunity, but also how much potential there still is. It makes you think, doesn't it? How our evolving knowledge of the immune system keeps opening doors to tackle problems that once seemed maybe insurmountable. It's a continuous push against those boundaries. A really powerful thought to end on. 
that continuous push. Well, thank you for joining us on this deep dive. We hope this has given you a clearer picture of the uh, the vital work happening in the search for a preventive HIV vaccine. Keep exploring, keep asking questions. Until next time.